All right, guys, so we're here today. What you're looking at here is a dishwasher, drawer, Fisher & Paykel. And we're gonna be removing this unit, putting in a new one. We have one over here as well. Both of them are coming out. And we have one and another one's on the truck. I'll take you along. All right guys, so we're done under the sink and you wanna first disconnect your water and your drain. I will show you more on doing that, but it's pretty straightforward. Depending on your cabinet setup, what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach a piece of string or cord, whatever. And as you pull your drain line and water line out, you will have a piece of uh, string, which is going to be back on this side, and that's going to help you to be able to put your new water line and drain line back in so you don't have to fight and struggle. All right, so we're going to attach a line. Alright guys, so we're going to be doing the uninstalling and I just kind of want to show you how to remove one of these from your cabinet. Now the power's on, always want to make sure your power, you can turn the power off by the breaker or you can unplug it. Now the plug for these will be in the back. I'll show you how to access the inner tub and also how to unplug it, which is gonna be behind the cabinet. So this is the inner basket, which is the wash basket area, the drawer. And then this other section, which houses the entire unit behind that, you can have a plug. You will unplug it there. And before you can do all of that, you need to make sure you disconnect your water, which is under the sink. Uh, we do have two units that we're installing. Uh, one is already out. And so here's the other water line. Make sure your water is off. And you're going to have a drain tube, which needs to be removed. You can remove the small connector, which will help it to exit easier than that fat piece. And put a piece of tissue or paper towel into the end of that black drain and that will protect uh, from water from leaking out. All right, so that's pretty straightforward and I'll show you how to extract the dishwasher as well. All right guys, so we have our drain line and water line disconnected, drains over there. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna attach just like we have on this one. That's a strap. You can use a rope, string, whatever you have and Basically, to route your water line back through your cabinet. I'm not sure how your cabinet is. It might not be like this. But if it is, you know what to do. And we're going to attach that water line to the drain line together. And you pull them together through that hole up there. And then we're able to extract that unit. All right, guys, also, before you pull your water lines and or your drain lines or your lines out, tape them together, and that's going to basically protect your uh, cord from coming off as well. And you can even put a uh, piece of uh, tape around the cord or the string and just in case, but you should be fine just by tying it. You do have that, uh, that washer not whatever that's going to help to keep that and make sure you put a piece of paper towel in the drain to protect it from leaking water out we need to change that one all right guys so we're going to be removing this fish from pickle and this one is a dish washer drawer so it's a little bit different than typical uh, dishwashers we're used to 
So we're going to removing the entire unit. We're putting in a new one. So to get access to the screws, which are on the inside, we should have actually four screws, two on each side. We're going to be removing this section first. There it is. All right. So, and then once you lift, now the best way to turn these is the lines. You want to make sure the lines have adequate room. You can slide the slide these guys in so you have access. Careful, don't damage anything. Set it down. You might have to put a box or something if yours is too tall. Now take a look on the inside. You're gonna have one screw here and one back there, another there and another there. And that's how you're gonna be removing it. After this cage, is removed you're gonna have your power cord back there and then you can just extract the entire unit you got to slowly fish your water lines out and that's how you're gonna take it out all right and just for reference this is where the screws are and that's just gonna be Phillips and of course one is way back there so you have an idea all right guys, so now all the screws are free. Now we're gonna be doing is pulling out the unit. Now you wanna pull it out just a little bit to make sure it's moving. Then we're gonna put this back in, slide this in and extract everybody out. But you also wanna make sure your lines are also coming. So you gotta be doing two things almost at the same time. So let's start by removing this, by pulling it. So now we're going to insert this back in and we're going to be pulling out the water line or lines together. Give you an idea, this rail. They lock right in. And now we can slide this out, but you guys also make sure that your water lines are coming out together. And you wanna make sure you have something under here. can see the water line this one is leaking as well in the same spot and we're gonna shove them through now if you have a cabinet like this you want to make sure that you're able to have a line so that you can actually pull your new lines back in now I don't recommend you using your old water lines on these not recommended they're old and they will leak so don't do it. Like I said, this is a, this is probably the hardest part of the job is getting the lines extracted. And then of course your power is up there, which will unplug. Sometimes you have to work it because it doesn't always fit. Uh, needle nose pliers. Sometimes when they, when you have a knot, it makes it a little bit harder to go through. There you go.
And now we should be able to finish pushing it through. There we go. Luckily we have the line because now as we continue to pull this through, it would be pretty difficult. Sometimes you have to twist because it is, wow, it's even broken too. There it is, so it's through. Yeah, look at that. So these are so brittle over, over the years, they just twist and they just, so. All right, so we're almost done. All right guys, so both units are out. Time to do some cleaning if you have to. And now we're gonna do the unboxing. And I'm gonna be installing number one here. All right guys, so I like to open these on their back and once everything is removed, just make sure that you have something covering or protecting the floor. Use some of the foam and put it underneath the unit so that you're not damaging or scraping anything. And of course, make sure you examine everything before you take it out of the box or even remove your old unit so you're not wasting your time. All right, this one looks good. So we're gonna be inserting this one now. All right, so we're getting ready to put this thing in. We have our water lines and everything back here. So untape. You have your power. This is gonna pull that through. And that's why we have this here. All right. All right, there's our hole. That's where we want our water line to be. So we can start pulling. And we're gonna start feeding it as well. All right, you can see we are almost in.
set this in and fully insert it. And then we're gonna remove this piece because now we have to secure the unit. Then we can secure our water lines and then we're pretty much good to go. And as you insert, you wanna pull your water line and your drain line in. You do not wanna kink anything. And be gentle when you pull this one. Both of them, but this one more delicate. And you're gonna insert some more. Power should already be on because you already plugged yours in. You have your hardware, for your drain, for your water line, how to route it, all that good stuff. So we'll go through this. Of course, make sure you remove all the tapes before you run your dishwasher. All right guys, we're gonna be removing this. Now we have to secure the basket or cage. Now to pull this up, you're gonna be pulling, there's a tab, you pull, there's a little clip under there, and you pull this, and it frees this. Let's see if I can show it to you. Sometimes you gotta push, sometimes you gotta push, and then you pull. There it goes. Make sure that you're careful with your water lines. Okay. Gentle. No kink. And of course, we're going to be securing a, the cavity pretty in. And you do have two screws here, one there, one here. And that's how you're going to be securing this. Then you're going to insert this back in just like it is. Moisture barrier, uh, we did install this on the other side. Um, I did not show it. We did have two units, one is damaged, so that was already installed on that one. Um, so do that as well. All right, where do you put the screw? I'll show you. Now you do have a lot of stuff in here, so you gotta be very careful that you don't get anything hit. Now, to be honest, it, it requires four, but if you can't get the other two in back there, it is not gonna hurt anything. All this, all the screws are doing is keeping this from sliding out. So you're totally okay if you only get two in, but we're gonna get all four in because we're like that.
right, guys, to get in this last one, you will need an extension. Otherwise, the screw is not going to be in straight. And when it's time to remove it, you can have problems. Long extension. Again, just be mindful of your cables. You might need two people, or if you're able to do it by yourself, then you're good. Just be mindful. They fall right in. All right, guys, so it's time to connect your drain line. Okay, you do have a stopping point. So you want to insert this until it stops right there. As you can see, it stopped. And this is what you want to use. This is low pressure, so you don't have a lot of pressure. Now you do have a tiny ring, and that's where you want to bring this. Right there. And now this will go onto the disposer. Now, these lines, I've seen where when they have a lot of sharp kinks, they tend to break in those areas. So you want to limit the angles as much as possible. I like to keep them as free as possible. So I'm going to change the orientation on this one just a little bit, just so that the bend is not too um, immediate. And you do have your clamp for this. Now, you can reuse the old one, it doesn't matter. Slide it over, insert it, and this is a 5 sixteenths. We shall connect that shortly. So what I want to show you on these uh, lines, um, originally it was wrapped over here, and it's, you may say it's more tidy but it's very, very restrictive. There's no need for these lines to be so tight against and holding them. It's better when they're actually free and able to move somewhat. So we're gonna take some of that rigidity out and just allow the line to relax so it's not too rigid. Because you gotta remember, as they carry hot water, the drain water is hot water and over the years, it will start to get brittle so you want to keep the line as smooth and as less restricted as possible. All right. Make sure it's not touching anything, obviously, but you don't need to restrict it too much. Okay, guys. So you do have an O-ring here. And you re you're recommended to replace the O-ring that was in that. So we take the old one out and put the new one in that's in the package and then you can secure your water supply we're gonna put it on this guy here there it is all right guys so here's your water supply i'm gonna put it around here right there Might need 
two hands here. And all this should be hand tight until everything is on so you don't cross thread anything. So make sure you're all nice and smooth. Then you can start to use your adjustable to secure it. If you're turning it and you notice it's tight, it's too hard, then you need to stop. So you should actually be able to use your finger or your fingers and turn. If it's too tight, then you know that you have a binding cross threading somewhere. And you should be able to snug this thing. Don't over tighten it, but you want it to be tight. Okay, how tight is tight? Well, don't go crazy. Now you can also turn the water on. Okay, if you're not totally sure, which is what we're gonna do now. Turn the water on. You can see the water going up. Now a good practice is as well, you can always run the water. I did not know that this unit wasn't running, but as you can see, the water was a little discolored, but that won't last. It'll just dissipate very shortly. Okay, water is on. Now, you can sit here, watch it, make sure there's no drips or anything. Now, you can also use a piece of paper towel, just put around it and just watch it and see. As well as you can take another piece of paper towel and just set it under and come back in a few minutes. You should not see a drip. And we're gonna probably zip tie this. Put some slack. I do not want it to be too tight. I might insert this guy and put him up there. You do need that air gap. Um, and that is to protect the water from draining back into the dishwasher. So you do need the air gap that is higher than the drain area. And providing you have that, you should be fine. But I'm gonna relocate this one. Alright guys, I just want to point something out. You want to keep this line as smooth and free as possible. So, you have your water coming out, water goes up, and goes down, goes up to the machine. So, once the water comes out of the sink, it does not have enough force to go up and go down. Okay. And that's why you have this. It's like a P trap. Sometimes you could actually put a loop in it, uh, but I think we're pl pretty, um, pretty good here. So we're going to run the dishwasher now and check for leaks. Want to remove your tape. All right, so we're doing a quick check. Make sure that we don't have any leaks.
Now we're checking our drain. This part is very important guys because you want to make sure that you're fully secured and you're not going to be leaking or dripping any water. All right, so I think we're pretty good here. Thanks for watching. Just got to clean up and we're good to go.